What's up, YouTube? I just wanted to take a second to welcome you all to my little piece of Nerdvana. Ah, classic video games. While emulation has managed to let those games reach the masses and get into the hands of a younger generation, there's just something about being able to walk over to the wall, take a cartridge off the shelf, slide into the original console, and pick up the original controller, and play that game exactly as it was meant to be played. This wall is dedicated to keeping that dream alive. So welcome to my retro video gaming wall. It's taken me years to collect everything that you see on this wall. It's always difficult to find a good way to display them, so it ends up being a lot of custom work if you have a lot of stuff. The shelving units start off with two bookshelves from Ikea. From that point forward, everything else is custom built. So as you can see, starting over here, we have ColecoVision transitioning into Intellivision, which transitions into Atari 2600. Then starting again on the right, we have Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, Original Nintendo all the way across. Then we have Sega Genesis and Master System games that are in the box. Some Super Nintendo games that are in the box. Wii and GameCube games. Xbox and PlayStation games. More Nintendo 64, some boxed in television. Some DS games. And over here is the basic setup for my handhelds. So I have a portable Famicom. I have my 3DS, my original DS, my DSi, DS Lite, all that type of stuff is there. And then for systems, I have the Atari 5200 here. Then starting over here, we have Intellivision 2, PlayStation 2 Slim, GameCube, and Dreamcast. Beside the TV, we have a top-loading NES, a Vectrex. And this Vectrex is actually going to be the focus of a future video because when I got it, it was missing the controller. The guy I bought it from wired a controller using an analog stick from a nunchuck and some buttons from a uh, LCD monitor. So I haven't destroyed this because I think it's kind of neat, the ingenuity that was involved behind it. But I'm going to be 3D printing and building a new one from scratch and I'll be uploading the design for that controller to Thingiverse once it's finished. Coming back across we have the Famicom, the Super Famicom and a Pong console. Then across the bottom we have the NES, the N64, and the Super Nintendo, the ColecoVision, the original Xbox, the Atari 2600, and down the bottom we have Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis with the 32X and the CD attachments, a Sega Master System, and down this side we have the PlayStation 1, TurboGrafx-16, the Wii, and an Xbox 360. Now, one of the important things for me when I set this up is that it had to be clean looking and it had to be easy to do rewiring on. So I did a couple of things that I haven't seen from other builders that might be useful to you guys in the future. It requires five switch boxes to hook all these systems up to the same TV, but you don't see them. And the reason for that is because I installed this hinged flap that keeps them tucked away safely. So this is the master switch box here which switches between the other four that are on the top. So you pick switch box one through four here, and then you pick your system on the corresponding switch box. In terms of the wiring to keep it hidden, this entire unit's designed to be removable so I can crawl in underneath, do my wiring, slide this back into place, and everything's nice and clean. And over on this wall, it's kind of a work in progress. I've started putting some of my handhelds into shadow boxes. So we have the Atari Lynx, a Sega Master System, a couple of Game Boy Advances, including the limited edition NES version. Now, I got this really, really cheap, but unfortunately the backplate is pretty scratched up. But the controller itself is in mint condition. I have a Gamecom, my original DS, an imported pink Japanese Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and a fully functioning microvision, which will be the focus of a future video. This is actually the very first handheld with replaceable cartridges. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at my retro gaming setup. Keep in mind that this is only my retro video game consoles. It doesn't encompass my retro computers either. And it doesn't encompass any of the modern day stuff that I've got. There's going to be lots of future videos on projects related to this wall. 
In fact, one of the ones I'm going to be working on soon is RGB lighting in these alcoves. I just got five meters of the stuff and I'm really excited to install it. We're going to try and go further into it and maybe make it so it's Arduino controllable. Maybe even make it so that when you're playing, it only leaves the light on above the system that you're currently using. I think that would be really neat. So if you're new here, why not subscribe? You'll get notified whenever I put out new content. If I did a good job on this video, why not toss me a thumbs up? And if I didn't do such a good job, toss me a thumbs down, but maybe let me know what I did wrong in the comments. All right, well, again, I'm James from Print and Play, and until next time, stay playing.